Well, good morning to all. Uh, we'll be joining Pat McCartney in a moment. I just want to tell you before that what our headlines are. We're going to be dealing with three topics at least, probably more. Uh, we'll start with the Man City game at the weekend and thoughts thereon. Chris Heaton Harris has announced he's not going to run again for the Houses of Parliament. <laughs> uh, so I'm saying that. And then the far right in Ireland, in the South particularly, and the effect it's having. Okay. Over to Pat McGarch. How are you this morning, Pat? Good. Absolutely beautiful morning here. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it, I, I think it's uh, uh, summer's come on. And I noticed, uh, I, I think we mentioned this last week, the one thing I, you can tell the difference is uh, you cut the grass on Tuesday and by Wednesday it needs cutting again. The, the growth levels are unbelievable. Uh, uh, you know? I think positive, Pat. There's a there's a blood of youth that's pulsing in your veins. You know what they say? A young uh, man's fancy lightly turns to thoughts of love and that kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go. Man City, what did you think of... Uh, they, uh, they won the league, uh, as the world, as mother knows, yesterday. Um what do you think of the, the? Did you watch the game? Yeah, Jim, I watched it. I was going and I, but I, but I lost the world they love. Uh, really, I stopped. Jim, you know, remember that? Uh, I think I, I've this whole thing about money banging. Erlen Holland, he's, I think he's 23, 22, 23, he's from Norway. He plays for Manchester City. He's on eight hundred and seventy-five thousand pounds sterling per week. Uh, they paid a hundred million for uh, Jack Grealish from Aston Villa. Calvin Phillips, uh, I don't know, can't remember now whether I think it might have been Leeds they bought him from. Yeah. Uh, they're paying him three hundred and fifty thousand a week, and he hasn't even on the team. You know, okay, it, it was never uh, the Premier League was never sort of uh, totally equal. There was always, but it's become so what would you say extreme now? It's ridiculous. You know, that's the spending power Man City has. Oh. And you know, yesterday I was watching, I thought, no, but 10, 15 years ago, you had uh, Mar uh, Ferguson, you had Wenger, you had Rafa Benitez, uh, you had jo Jose Marino, and there was all real tussle, and they were all on a par. They were all, you know, they were spending big money, but uh, they were all spending much the same. But Manchester City bought Kevin De Bruyne, De, De Silva, Grealish. They, uh, no, they bought about five, seven players. Now, you know, I would love to know. How uh, how Man City are getting away with uh, under the financial fair play rules when Everton have been slapped right, left, and centre? But anyway, mm. Jude, I was sitting yesterday thinking, no matter you know, look at even Liverpool, uh, Klopp, and people are sneering at Klopp. But if you look at Klopp, about five seven of uh, the team uh, that he or the squad he has are homegrown talents. They're not people brought in at 150 million type thing. They're, you know, not uh, what do you call a young fellow. I can't even remember his, his name now. I'd Trent, even that young fellow from Trent, there, uh, Connor, Bradley, Connor Bradley. No, yeah. he bought, uh, the, and they've about four or five. Like they, Liverpool just simply don't have that sort of spending power. I don't think Arsenal have it either and so on. But, you know, every time, um, it, like it's now nation states are buying clubs. And you just watch now next year, Newcastle are going to go the same route and right. so on. Okay, well, let me now explain the whole thing to you, Pat. Okay, first of all, you'll have to get rid of this nostalgia for the days when cloth cap men piled in in their tens of thousands to watch games. And you had, uh, what were the names of those? That famous Leeds team. Was it uh, Clogger? Oh, uh, Nor Norman, Norman what? Norman. Norman Hunt Hunter. Norman bites your legs. <laughs> bites your legs, Hunter. You must get rid of this image of those days as being the good old days. Uh Money counts, and that's the way it is. That's just how the game is developed. There's nothing you can do about it. Is there a plus in that? Is there a you know? Is there a good side of it? There certainly is. Uh, Man City is, I would say, probably the best team I've ever seen in my life. Um, they play really good football. Now, they weren't very good. I didn't think they were particularly good on Sunday, yesterday. But uh, the couple of goals, that was scored by a local, not a local boy, but certainly an English kid, from not too far away. Stockton, I think he's from. Um, you know, those were brilliant goals by any standards. Yeah. So there were moments of absolute magic. And we know ourselves that Man City can play terrific stuff. And so I would compare it to this, Pat. I would say it's a difference between having a hoolie in the kitchen and going to the Bolshoi Ballet. Because mm. the hoolie in the, in the kitchen has got its merits uh, and a local club, likewise, will have its merits, but it won't be 
for the dancing skills. If you want to see real dancing skills, pure art, go to the Bolshoi Ballet. And the same thing, if you want to see really class soccer, you've got to pay for it and it's going to be uh, funded by states. And besides that, incidentally, I, I see little difference between states funding uh, a club and some multi-billionaire or some Russian oligarch funding them uh, because it amounts to the same thing. They're both rich to an extent that you and I will never understand. But anyway, I'm glad Man City won. I thought they had moments of magic. And while in a way I share your regrets, I think you just have to accept it. The days of being identified with your local club, uh, like you might with the GAA club at present, those are gone as far as soccer is concerned. Yeah, well, okay. Uh, maybe uh, There's a certain, I can't argue, but uh, it was, there was a guy on yesterday somewhere. He said it's uh, actually has moved the game. He says, try getting a ticket for some of the games. They're, it's so expensive. Ah, yeah. Then there's all the ancillary stuff and all the rest of it. And you're dead, right? The days of the cloth crap uh, supporter are definitely gone. It's now corporate seats and so on. Mm. But Jude, I, I've got to admit, I, I sometimes, you know, I think you reach the golden egg. You reach the stage. I I I don't know about you, uh, but I I have reached the stage sort of uh, uh, Manchester City nearly from the start of the season. I know they're going to win. They just buy, uh, they have bought the best players. Now all they do is buy. I know a, a marquee signing every so often just to sort of enrich what they already have. They spent about uh, what about I'd say close to a billion about five seven years ago. And now how they how we're allowed to do that uh, on the basis of fair uh, financial uh, I think fair play. I think there's some investigation. There are 115 charges, I think, uh, uh, to sort out. So uh, it could be that uh, that, that title. But you, you know, and by the way, Andrew, the one uh, actually where I'd, uh, I would uh, have a disparate view from you is like, you know, no, you think, back, the point where you think I'm talking shit. Is that what you mean? Yeah, that would be it. You know, <laughs> like when you're able to pay a guy nearly a million pound a week, yeah. you know, like could not in your forest do that. Could Leicester City do that? Could any other? It's only, you know, when you have a nation state on oil revenues, pay it and pay it. And this was a, every time a real state, you no, know, uh, there was no risk buying Haaland. He was scoring goals for fun in Germany, which is a very, very high standard league. They just said, right, we want him. What much do we have to pay for him? They got him re reasonably cheap. I think it was only about 70 million. And in real terms, it probably should have been double that, you know, because uh, Harry Kane went to, uh, was it Bern for 100 million? But anyway, so you sort of go and uh, whatever, but you sit down and say, you know, when they can get pay a guy who doesn't even get on the first team three hundred fifty thousand a week. I uh, well, that's, I think that's silly if he'd be paying money like that for a guy who's not going to find a place in the team. But I suppose they wanted to try him out and see, and he what he did appear a couple of times, or more than a couple yeah. of times, and he you know he was okay, but he's not just at yeah. that scintillating I mean, level. You, uh, one, of the, one, of the, one of the great stories is I think they needed an Englishman I think uh, for a third uh, choice goalkeeper. And he has yeah. never played, I think he's played uh, and won an exhibition game in something like four years. And he's on something like 30,000 a week, 35,000 a week. So mm -hmm. what multiply by four, that's one, uh, that's what, uh, 120,000 a month. And it, so it's more than a million a year. And he's played two games in five years. And I've made them on their that's got to be the best job in the world. Uh, week but, for... but, but, well, actually, I'm not sure about that because I, to be honest, I think a lot of those players. They certainly like the money, but that's not on their mind. It's winning the game and playing well. Mm -hmm. I think that's what. Uh, and you see them sometimes when they're substituted, they uh, go off feeling they really are pissed off. Uh, I think who was it? Was it Holland that was annoyed because he'd, he'd scored? Uh, yeah, and I, I, I remember most most Salah, most Salah a couple of weeks. But no, oh, yeah, this, right. this guy yeah. is as uh, as he's there purely for decorative purposes, he, he, and in the sense that he's I think he's thirty seven. But they have to have someone because of the, the rules, they have to have yeah. some sort of English. So he knows he's never going to play, but he's uh, picking up 35,000 a week for his pay. Well, you see, that is fair play. I know there's a, what seems like obscene amounts of money, Pat, but stop and think what's put into um, soccer by these nation states that uh, fund them or these multi billionaires, it's nothing compared to the amount of money he's going into nuclear weapons. For Britain alone, absolutely. No, so not keep that in mind. Like, yeah. if you're talking about something really stinks, like, you know, but come on, Jesus Christ, that. we're not comparing like with like from football. To well, yeah, you're right, you're right. From like yes, yes, I'm saying that, sure. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. I, I, that, that 
uh, nuclear weapons are meant to destroy people and will uh, if, they, if yeah. they get a chance. Whereas this other thing gives any amount of feel. Look at the pleasure on the faces of those city supporters on, on Sunday. Unbelievable! Uh, yeah. They were very, very happy, and it does you. You know, so much. You know, I know you're 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 waxing lyrical about city. Jeez, dude, I I get bored shitless watching them. I, 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 you know what do you call? Go on, I, Pat, I believe I, that. I I, I I I think they're totally lacking in charisma. Ah, uh, well, did you see the uh, what's his name? Go and Foden. Did you see the two Foden goals? Uh, oh, he's a, he's a, oh, he's a very talented guy. You're not saying that's um, a beauty. I, 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 I've got to admit, and I'm. I, I didn't start out this way, but I've become a big Liverpool fan in the last couple of years because of Klopp. The oh, song about Klopp are genuinely yeah, like, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. He, he identified with the city, he took over yeah. the club. He's right up there with Shankly and Paisley. Yeah, yeah. And there's something about him as well. The player, every one of the players is, you know, that he's a totally decent human yeah, being yeah, yeah, and yeah. so on. I agree with you there. And uh, Manchester City would fall down in all those when you make that comparison. Mm. But again, maybe that's not fair. Uh, Klopp's a different sort of a guy, and his teams play a different sort of a way. I have to hand it to uh, old Pep. You know, it's not simply the players he buys, mind you, they're worth a lot of money. But he manages to put them into a cohesive unit, and they seem to know yeah. each other's thoughts. You know, they pass the ball three, four times inside three or four seconds. And they just and they they know, know uh, where to where to put the ball. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. And right, I, but I here's think... here's the thing, Doctor Collins. Could yeah. he do a brain Clough? Could he? I would like to. It's no I know, uh, he is a brain manager. There's no, I think there's we no should now, Jenny Flex. You said the word brain. Uh, yeah. uh, but right. Let us now go into the second. Go into the second. Go into the second division and yeah. have no money and see how good you are. Can you take <laughs> Clough done it twice? Oh, he was off of something else. And also, he was terrific to have interviewed. He's always said something. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Off, you know? uh, anyway, that's enough about football. Yeah, okay, all right, <laughs> all right. Anyway, Man City. Uh, come on, Man City, come on, Man City. Anyway, the one good thing about Man City, they're not Man United, okay? Stop, yeah. stop talking about that. Okay, <laughs> let's You've go just to, lost the Man United court. Let's go to, <laughs> let's go to another day at the end. Chris Heaton Horace, as a, a, the... British Secretary of State, you may know, for the occupied territories here, uh, has announced that he's not going to be running the next time round. Uh, you'll probably have heard the wailing and gnashing of teeth everywhere throughout Ireland at these words. Would you agree? This is yeah. a terrible loss. You talk about uh, Kevin you, De Bruyne you, you getting know, injured. Imagine, uh, how, will, how will we uh, live without Chris Seaton Horace? Uh, uh, remember one of the, uh, I can't remember it was a famous uh, it was a Dorothy Parker it was a famous uh, what in America yeah and it was a uh, Hoover that not the not the FBI chief but one of the presidents somebody said uh, the president has died and she says how will they know apparently because <laughs> he was so <laughs> because he was such a he did so little in life didn't know oh, whether he was alive or dead you know as will prove to Go you, ahead. at least to indicate to you how close our thinking is. That's exactly the comparison I intended to draw. I was going to do the same quotation when I saw Chris Eaton Horace. How will we know that he has left <laughs> since yeah. he's done sweet damn all when he was here? Um, yeah, exactly. I, yeah. I, and he, he even looked like a man you know, before this announcement, he even looked in the few interviews I've seen, he looked like a man who was halfway gone already, you know. Was he sure. refused to do, uh, right. He was the Secretary of State during a, a two year hiatus. He refused to take any decisions, which was quite an achievement. He refused to do uh, media interviews, except uh, a couple of, I think, uh, standing at the platform. And and when and things got rough, he just said, Right, right over. Uh, I don't think he ever met anybody that uh, could challenge him. And, uh, and his profile was sort of lower than the mat on the floor. Uh, you know, and I, I'm going, you know, so like who the hell's going to tell the difference that he sta stayed there and gone? Dude, but there was a there was one guy a couple of years back who worked with Simon Coveney, and I, I think I was the last, was his, his name Smith or something? I can't remember his name, you know, and I, yes, I think I was yeah. the last decent secretary of state. Remember Karen Bradley? I always thought that was <laughs> that, that was the Senate of Tory appointments, the woman who didn't know that Catholics didn't vote for union for the union. <laughs> You know, and she was Secretary of State. You know, yeah. she was appointed by um, Theresa May, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, well, uh, I I don't think, has there, have there, apart from that guy Smith, has there been, uh, yeah. it just was a feeling about him rather than anything that he did, as far as I know. But 
Uh, can you think of any good British Secretaries of State? I can't actually. There was well, a one that uh, got mauled by uh, Bernard Devlin. Aye, uh, uh, Regley Maudling, wasn't it? Aye, uh, Regley Maudling. Uh, uh, he, uh, he was good. Uh, he was a guy that said, bring me a tall brown one. What a bloody awful country. Uh, and then there, then there was a, then there was a wee gobshite Roy and Roy Mason who oh, was brought up on some council council estate, and uh, when he came over here, he was he was, uh, he was t taken around by, by the lords and the lairds, fishing on their estates and all the rest of it, and and he thought he was Adolf Hitler. He introduced all these uh, punishments and whatever and uh, sentences and all that mm. sort of stuff. But I mean, no, Jude, if you're asking the question, I'm answering honestly. If you're asking, this, was there one outstanding secondary estate? I can't think of one. Mm. Uh, you know that uh, Mason, uh, although he doesn't deserve it, features in Francie Brawley's Hitchblock song. Uh, there's a line I've forgotten what it is now, but he actually mentions them. Not not favorably. <laughs> I hasten to. No, I hardly think so. No. Uh, anyway, we have got Wedgie Benz, Tony Benz's son, almost certainly will yeah. be the uh, Secretary of State mm -hmm. for Northern Ireland. So that might be interesting. Might be, although he's he's yeah. much more right wing than his father was. Or at least temperate. You have to be. Yeah. You have to be. You have to be neutered before you're allowed into uh, uh, star. I just know you're mentioning right, right wing people, and it's far from our little land. But the the butcher of Tehran, uh, Abraham Rishi, the, oh. uh, the 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 uh, president of, of Iran, died last last night in that car or car crash, helicopter crash. You would um, I presume uh, there'll be a lot of conspiracy theories in the, in the coming days about who's been. Oh, well, I'm the sure. Attack on Israel. Uh, he apparently he was either uh, authorized it or was in favor of it. Anyway, uh, he's by the way, Jesus, dude, he was some guy. Remember, um, in 1988, he was a judge, and they literally sentenced thousands to death. They and they executed them as well. You know, people who they considered anti the revolution. Yeah. And then remember that when the wee girl who was arrested there about three or four years ago and she yeah. died in police custody because she hadn't wore an uh, hijab or something. Uh -huh. You know, remember there was uh, when the revolutionary guard, they reckon up to 500 people were killed in Tehran. And that's why he became known as the butcher of Tehran. Like he was an absolute fanatic, you know, a total hardliner. So it's going to be mm -hmm. very interesting to see. You know, the, uh, Iran is considered the bad boy, you know. Right. Uh, because they're uh, supporting Hamas, they're supporting Hezbollah, they're supporting the Houthis, <laughs> and so on. So it's going to be very interesting. And by the way, uh, our friend Rashi, uh, he also said that he didn't want to look west. He, he organized a big uh, thing with um, China, look look east. Uh, mm. uh, the, 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 you know the way the sanctions from um, the Americans uh, hit Iran big time. Yes. But anyway, they, uh, he organized the uh, oil sales to China. So they're looking east, uh, you know. So dude, it's uh, all all that's at play at the minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. International, high high stakes stuff. It's yeah. very difficult to know how things will work out. An awful lot of people are slipping into a kind of a mood of things are going to hell. There's going to be a war. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't like to do that. Too. I hate even saying yeah. it, but that's what they. Uh, uh, and I suppose in a way. Well, yeah, but you know, someone. I don't want to really go down this road. But like, see what's happening in Gaza. We're being asked, and, and you know, the, uh, to support this, we're being asked to sort. The, the Americans, uh, you know, are sort of saying, uh, "We don't." Dude, if, if the Russians were doing to, uh, um, say, Ukraine. the Germans, or the Germans were doing to the French, what the Israelis are doing to the Gazans, mm. there would be moral outrage That's across right. the world. Well, there is moral right. outrage, but yeah. the political outrage isn't followed. You no. Know, you, I have I've read quite a lot about Mike Pompeo, the former Secretary of State, and Mike Pence, the former, are saying Israel should be allowed to follow, you know, finish the job and all the rest of it. Not a word of condemnation, and so on. Like you know, if, if this was being done to the Israelis, you can imagine, you know, uh, you know, say the Saudi Arabia was doing this to the Israelis. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But anyway, I mean, what do we expect? What do we expect? Uh, I can still remember one. I think it was one of two occasions when I took part in a public protest march, and it was against the war in Iraq, invasion of Iraq. They hadn't done it yet, but Tony Blair was determined to have it happen. He did, and thousands upon thousands were killed. You know, he said, that's because it was a hopeless case in the beginning. Afghanistan, yeah. the same thing, all over again. So again and again, the West does stuff, and you know, I can't understand anybody. 
anybody. He must be wild for a fight if you would join the army and go to places like that and try to kill people. Because the chances are you'll yeah. get killed yourself, uh, or even you weren't. Yeah. How could you? How could you live with yourself? Fight no, did you, did you just, a, a, a million people were supposed to have died in Iraq, and that at least a million. Isn't that, isn't that you know for for what? Ah, uh, uh, exactly. Okay, let's move on from anyway. that. Unbearably depressing. That. Uh, let's go on to another subject that isn't unbearably depressing, but it is depressing. And that is, there's an article that um, says the uh, Dublin one is for, is for the far right, uh, uh, that they're threatening to kill a politician, and yet Ireland is ignoring this threat. Now, there's, they, they give in instances in this article of uh, threats that have been made. Janet Horner, who's a Green Party councillor in Dublin, I gather, she was attacked in the North Circular Road. Um, and the guy shouted, uh, Dublin one is for the far far right, and he right, tried to kill yeah. her, or he threatened to kill her. On the same day, uh, a councillor, an independent, T T T Tanya, is it? Tanya uh, Doyle was attacked. Tanya, Do Tanya Doyle? The, uh, was attacked at Harvest. Uh, her, her husband, and, herself and her husband were putting up posters. She was punched, I think, and he aye. was punched to the ground. Uh, that's right. And then another guy, was that the one where uh, somebody arrived with a Box cutter uh, knife. Well, I think that was uh, that was a, a girl called Elno Doherty. I think uh, uh, somebody arranged. Uh, somebody had a knife, and then a, a friend of his arrived with a box cutter. Oh God! So it does. You know, you think of Joe Joe Cox in in Britain and that other MP that was killed. Um, yeah. And we know that there are some people who are very got very far right views and who are you know very, I don't know, would you say extreme in the way they express them. Is it yeah. just a question of time? Somebody asked on TV. Is there only a question of time before somebody's killed? No, I think you'd uh, agree with you totally. As I mentioned uh, last week, I was in a wee small village just outside Larry Kenny. The other day, there's a lovely wee restaurant there, a wee cafe, and gone for a cup of coffee. Me and my dear missus, we went down, and there was two guys outside with post or with these leaflets, Ireland is full. And they tried to hand me one, dude. I'd, I'd try to be polite to most people, but told them to bugger off. I ain't taking that. Crap. But here's the thing, dude. There are genuine issues in this country. There are, you know, there, there are real issues in regard to housing, health, and all the rest. No one's disputing it. And they were really bad before we started, you know. But along came, well, I think um, two or three things. First, there was the pandemic. Then there was the war in, our, um, in Ukraine. And then um, there's the war in Gaza and there's Palestinians and all that. And then, of course, prior to that, there was the Syrian thing. Now, Jude, we have a, a party. We have a, some um, 120,000 Ukrainians in this country. Yeah, yeah. And Jude, that's like a, that's like a setting state. up a new county uh, in the state. All right. Oh, bollocks. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, we, we, that's like setting up a new county. The new, the new county of uh, Ukraine uh, is in Ireland, you know, up there with Donegal, like, like uh, I don't know, like Cavan, I, I think is maybe 90,000. So it's like setting up a new Cavan or a new Sligo or a new whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, right, there's all that. But dude, we had problems beforehand. Now, it's very easy to, um, what would you say, push that up and sort of, uh, you know, put it all into the pot and stir the crap uh, out of it and say, you know, uh, these people are causing all our, all our problems and they're responsible mm -hmm. for it and they're freeloading on us and whatever, whatever, whatever. Dude, we had the problems beforehand. There are many legitimate people who came here from, you know, Ukraine and from Syria and from these. And dude, we, we, our budget is surplus this year is eight billion. Uh, um, and I think we can live with this. What I don't like, dude, is the fact that there are quite a few people making serious money, freeloading on it. You know, uh, like the uh, um, capitalist enterprises. Mm -hmm. You know. I exploit. I think the word is exploiting the situation to make big, big money. Oh, and yeah. I hold the government responsible. Dude, they, they said about six years ago they were going to build reception centres mm. where they could house immigrants under the state and in proper conditions. They have, they have offloaded it onto the private sector and their guys putting three and four people into wee garages on, on, their, on their houses and they're sitting, you know, uh, making £70 per person per night. Like, uh, there, there's uh, there's uh, what is it? there's some guy uh, I think uh, about Monaghan they reckon he's already made something like 14 million you know, in, in about two years Jeez. so we do that like that, that's what's wrong with the system it's not the people come and by the way you see the other side of the story Jude, if somebody's coming here to free road 
Uh, no, I have no hesitation to put them out. But see if you come here uh, escaping war and poverty and yeah, and fear, you're more than welcome. Well, what about, you see, uh, another circumstances where I would be in favour of letting these people come in is if there's a vacancy, if there's stuff needs to be done yeah. and these guys are willing to do it, whether it's a high position, whether it's a low position, whether it's middle of it, then I say get, bring them in and get them cracking and get them a, give them a Absolutely. chance to get started working as soon as possible. I mean, years and years, decades ago when I went to Canada, that was the basis of entry. You the, the position you were filling, in my case, teaching, had to be something that could uh, could be couldn't be done, couldn't be filled by a Canadian. And only when that was clear, then did they bring in other people. That's uh, common sense. We tell you that, you know, that if yeah. you can use immigrant labor in the in the wide sense of the world, why the hell wouldn't we? And then we worry about these people. Oh, all these men are nothing to do all day, and they're hanging around, and they're only be up to mischief mm -hmm. and so on. I think that feeds into a, a, a sort of a disgusting uh, fear, stranger yeah. danger sort of narrative. Yeah, the, the other. But dude, I can't remember. Somebody said to me the, a couple of weeks back that if the brown skinned people disappeared from our hospitals, we would be in deep doo doo uh, big time. And I, I think that's true. Dude, I, I, have to, I have a sort of condition that I have to go up to Sligo General Hospital every, uh, about every couple of months. Mm -hmm. And you meet. Uh, uh, nurses um, who are brown skinned. I met, I've met a girl from, I think she was uh, not Latvian or something. Lovely, absolutely lovely people. Uh, first class at their job, very professional and so on. And, in, you know, and you, have you gone to any of the cafes around here? Half the people are, you know, speak with foreign accents. There's a wee cafe in Latvian, myself in the Miss and she, I think she's, and she might be Latvian as well. Lovely as wee girl you could possibly meet. Mm. Uh, and uh, no, loves being here and is, you know, settled here and all of that. Dude, it's this racism, bigotry that I can't take. Like, if somebody's causing trouble, dude, I have no hesitation. Get them out. Yeah. It's not what it's about. You know, uh, and if somebody come here and, uh, and you know, has committed a criminal offence, right. But, dude, see this just blanket because they're the other. Mm. I have no time for that. Yeah, well, well, you know, I, I think I see it wasn't you, it was somebody else I was talking to about immigration, and uh, as soon as I mentioned it, they said, "What about that? What about that poor wee girl that was a teacher and was jogging along a toe uh, path?" Uh, uh, down in the bank cell, uh, the canal. I mean, uh, that's yeah. true, and that's horrible. But as you you just listed in your brief experience with Sligo Hospital, the the huge number of immigrant people who are doing terrific work. So why is yeah. it that we allow the media to, to somehow present the picture of this horrible thing that happened with that girl who was out uh, jogging after she'd yeah. been teaching in primary school and was killed by some immigrant? Uh, allow that to dominate our thinking. It was a horrible event. But we have to weigh that against the, all the good people who are doing good things for us yeah. and, and, and keeping a system, system going that wouldn't keep going if it was, wasn't for them. Yeah, Judy, I heard somebody on... Uh... One of the talk shows now, that, uh, yeah, it's, but it's, it's, somebody said, look, there were something like 3,500 cases of domestic abuse re uh, reported in the, in, in, by the way, that figure, I've just made it up, but some, some, but he said something like that yeah. on uh, a show, and he says, how many, you know, he says, I would consider that the vast, vast, vast majority are by Irish people on their spouses, and nothing to do with foreigners, but he says, I, I bet you if some, uh, he says, um, somebody from Ukraine or Latvia or wherever uh, gets, a, a, you know, as done for domestic abuse. That's is the one case that will get the he headlines. That's you know? right. That's right. Uh, it, it's, it's, um, it's kind of depressing. Uh, Pat, what would you do, Pat? Uh, you know, there's a danger we could be accused of saying, oh, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. And yet we can't offer alternatives. What would you do if you were in charge? Is there a single thing you would do? Oh, Jude, they should have built the reception centres and should have had a proper system. It's a system, Jude. Uh, uh, we seem to, in this country, in this state, we seem to leave everything to sort of, you know, we we, we got overrun. Okay, look, there's certain events I know we couldn't control. But, Jude, we were told about five, six years ago if we built about five to, uh, reception centres with proper facilities, with proper uh, outlets and all the rest, and a proper vetting system, we would have a lot less problems. And, Jude, we should have done that. Ireland has become a very wealthy country. We're going to be a magnet for a lot of people. There is a way of doing this properly, and there's a way of doing it in a humane way and in a proper way and so on. And, Jude, like... 
there's a lot of uh, talk about some people that are not being vetted. Allegedly, they are all vetted. And so, dude, but the bottom line of it all is get a system in place that uh, that works, not this one way. One day we've, uh, we have this way of doing things the next week. And the other thing, dude, remember uh, uh, the uh, direct provision? Jesus, dude, that, uh, there were people there for five and six years and uh, direct provision who should have been only there for a couple of months for, you know, uh, vetting and then out. It's ridiculous. We need to get the system up and running properly. Yes, I, I, I totally agree. I think the one of the big problems is that they have to integrate these people who are legitimate immigrants as quickly as possible into the fabric of society. Get them a yeah. job, get them a house, you know, let, let them find a house themselves, I suppose. But give them a job and get them working so that they're not sitting in big um, residences where, you know, you have 100 people in the, in the building. Uh, it's only when you crack that and quickly turn over uh, whether or not they're allowed yeah. to stay uh, or else they're getting ejected. Only when that uh, happens, One thing you said earlier, earlier as well, see if these people have got skills. Surely it would be not that difficult to ascertain what those skills are and put uh, them to work. Yeah, my best. it's blindingly obvious, but nobody seems to talk about that. Uh, anyway, anyway, I don't, I don't know what you'll do with it other than that. Try to speed the process. Up. Richard, one, one other thing as well. There's a we, um, you know, I notice. Have you looked, watched a bit of social media? Uh, two people who got particularly uh, nasty abuse was uh, Leo Varadkar and Rodrigo Garman. Mm -hmm. Now the fact that they're both gay just might have something to do with that as well. Dude, there was a lot of it was seriously, seriously nasty. You know, there were, um, you, you know, a lot, a lot of it was very, very personalized abuse and so on. Uh, do you think, Pat, are these, is this far right thing, this response to immigration or to people of a different color or race or whatever, uh, gay? Uh, is this yeah. something that's in the Irish temperament or is it just a nasty bunch of bastards who are incapable well, I, I of think thinking it's a nasty straight? Bunch, uh... I think it's a nasty bunch of bastards, but dude, what worries me slightly is, you know, because there are genuine issues there, and they really are, dude, because there, was, there were big issues beforehand, but but so it's the far right find it easily to be manipulated. You know, it's like the boy sitting with, you know, a big uh, uh, loaf of bread, and he gives the other boy one slice, and he, and he tells the, uh, hey boy, that, that immigrant's going to take your slice of bread while he's holding the, the full loaf. You know, that, that there's an element of that. These people are sort of making sure, you know, having a go at everybody under the sun. Uh, and, and it's easy to, uh, you know, to, the, the cons there was what, there was cons uh, conspiracy theories, there, is, there was anti-immigrants and, the, you know, they're all far right. They all seem to have now coalesced into this sort of, uh, we're against anything that isn't this sort of nativist thing, you know. Mm, it's unbelievable, mm. you know, I don't know. Where, where, but I'll put it against, I think the article you're, you're referring to was written by Una Malali and I think uh, she's, she's sort of saying, hey, we better sit down and have a good look at this. Mm. Uh, I wonder, the police have been, the, the Garda have been um, very sort of light touch with these groups. Yeah. Um, I don't remember them having arrested anybody. Um, I'm sure they have occasionally, but by and large, they've tended to uh, velvet glove stuff. Would you be in favour of that? Uh, Would you be in favour of arresting people and uh, putting them to jail? Or Jude, I don't think, uh, I don't believe in the, uh, the heavy heavy squad approach. But put it, I guess, see the day that uh, they crossed the line. Jude, see the, some, of the, the, some of these guys have started protesting outside politicians' houses. Mm. I think that's crossing the line. Like, well, what would you I've, do with I've, those I've, guys? What, what would you do with them? I would You're arrest them, Jude. Hmm? Yeah, I've, I would arrest them. Jude, you, you have no right... Like they can protest outside the door, they can protest outside uh, as long as it's peaceful protest outside their office, and that'll get them plenty of publicity and get their point across, mm -hmm. you know. But to go outside somebody's house at nine o'clock at night when there's the young children, these are democratically elected people. If you don't like the, what they're standing for, vote them out of office. Jude, I don't think uh, you know. I think that that's crossing the line. And as well as that, physically attacking somebody like what you do, you start off by giving about what three examples where people are actually being assaulted. Jude, that, that, you know that's not acceptable in a democracy. You know what? Whether you're far right, far left, or anything in between. Well, what sort of penalty do you think they should get? In should they be sent to prison? How long? Well, if some Jude, if somebody attacks, like comes along with a knife and a, a bull, bull cutter and punches someone in the face. The very least they should get a six months in jail. At the very least. Mm -hmm. What are people who demonstrate outside uh, politicians' homes? Well, uh, I would uh, uh, the cops. I would think should go along and uh, ask them to move along. 
And if they refuse, arrest them. I would give them at least a month in jail for that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I tend to agree with you. I definitely tend to agree with you. I think I would, if I was the police, I'm sure this is what they're doing. Uh, the Guardi are standing off. What they should do is identify these people, take photographs of them, and then to set, tell them, listen, if you are found to do this again in the presence or yeah. outside the home of a politician, you'll have to suffer the legal consequences. Yeah. Uh, and then, I mean, they can make what they want of that. Next time that they do it, arrest them. Uh, um, but arrest you, uh, them, uh, maybe, maybe arrest them after the event, because I think yeah. the arresting of people right there on the spot when there's a lot of their mates around. You know, yeah, yeah. people who are, uh, don't lose face. I'm a tough guy. Yeah. I won't go down lightly. I won't let cops push yeah. me around. So yeah. maybe do it off off stage, so to speak. But make sure that it's a good hefty penalty they get when they... When yeah, they but he, what he, the big, Simon Harris, the Tisha, apparently he has young kids. And they were uh, they were outside his house, uh, a group. And, and by the way, the other thing as well, dude, some of these guys are wearing masks. You know, oh, they're yeah. not showing up. It's meant to be intimidatory. And they're deliberately trying to uh, hide their identity. So in other words, it's, uh, that is not, uh, what would you say, the way to go in any sort of democratic society. And I think these people sort of, they've been getting away with it so long because they, they're not getting arrested. Yeah. Do you think this is something that's in the Irish character? Uh, because no, I do not. No. No? No, you don't, don't think, you? You don't think there's a, a sort of a little hidden kernel of uh, racism and uh, nastiness in us. Well, I, oh, I do. There, there are certainly certain people, but if I do, the, uh, the last day I read, the vast majority of people even yet uh, are don't hold these views. Uh, some polar red and so on. But you, and, and I'm going to repeat myself, I think this is for the third time. The fact that there are issues there, uh, you know, that like Jude, I think there's a million people or roughly a million people awaiting hospital appointments uh, uh, there's a subject we could have come on to the day we probably won't know know about child poverty. There's so what about oh. thirty thousand children and child poverty? Yeah, uh, yeah. in this country, there there's all sorts of issues. Uh, housing has a massive, massive issue. You know, uh, you'd be uh, uh, when the recession hit about two thousand and eight, all house building stopped. In fact, now uh, if you even Donegal, if you try getting a house. If a house comes up for sales uh, on a Monday, it's probably gone on a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. There's all sorts of, you know, and of course then uh, all these guys are uh, who are doing the uh, immigrants and getting money for it, they're buying up property right, left and centre. There's hardly a hotel operating in Donegal now because they're all being turned over to immigration mm -hmm. centres and yeah. these people are making massive money. Uh, well, I suppose they have to put them somewhere, but it does suggest to me uh, people sort of uh, trying to make up their policies as they go along. Oh, here's a bunch of people. Put them in, we better put them in a hotel rather than thinking the yeah. thing out and saying, uh, what's our ultimate objective with these people? A, do they belong here or don't they? Are they? Should they be admitted or shouldn't they? And then work that through quickly. Then those that are left yeah. that are illegitimate get circumstances where they can find a job. The thing is, many of these people have skills. I know for a fact because I'm, I'm, I, there's a Polish guy who's done work for me in my TV. They, yeah. They're really brilliant, really nice people, really skilled people. Why can't we find, find ways of using that rather than all the time saying, "Oh, geez, you know, Ireland for the Irish, you know, such and such a place is full." Yeah. I, it, it's it's stupid. So the the, the, uh, the uh, a lot of Eastern European countries, Ireland, uh, as you well know. Uh, has gone for the academic route. Everybody wants a degree mm. and wants, mm. uh, you know, to be uh, in computers or whatever, and mm. or teaching or whatever. Yeah. Whereas in uh, in Germany and in the Eastern Europe, there's a massive big thing about uh, apprenticeships, plumbers, uh, electricians, builders, and so on. Mm. Uh, around Letterkenny, there was two or three Polish guys, and they were you no, know, uh, you no, know, the electrics in their car. Apparently, they were the guys to go to. I don't know if they still exist. I don't know all the rest. And I know for there's an E and I engineering which applies about a thousand people, you know, about five minutes from here. And I know they were really interested in getting Europe, uh, Eastern European guys, because a lot of them have the background. We're so busy shouting stranger danger, we don't see this. The stranger could in fact be something, somebody who could solve problems for us. Time's up, Pat. Time's up. Okay, Can you believe that? Just zip past. See you next week. Uh, no, next week. I will see you Friday. 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 Uh, <laughs> all the best, Jude. Okay, see Pat, you later. thanks very much. Bye. Uh, bye. All the best. <laughs>